Hi, my name is Liv Swanger. I'm a PharmD and I'm calling for Dr. Derek Shepard about our mutual patient. Her name is Karen Hamilton. She was born on 2 2 1944, which is which makes her 77 years old. She's currently in the emergency department in bed seven, and her chief complaint is a progressive shortness of breath. She was previously seen in the emergency department and treated for CAP for which she is on amoxicillin um, and azithromycin. However, she's in today as her, per, as her symptoms have gotten worse. And the main purpose of this phone call is to distinguish whether or not therapeutic anticoagulation versus usual care anticoagulation is more appropriate for a patient. Based on the New England Journal of Medi Medicine article, anticoagulation um, in non-critically ill patients with COVID-19 some history about this patient is she does have some comorbidities, including obesity, hypertension, uh, diabetes, and she has had a recent COVID test, um, which indicated positive. And I feel that overall, this um, she meets the inclusion criteria and does not meet the exclusion criteria of this randomized control trial. It was a multi-platform adaptive and I feel that it had strong evidence, although there were some limitations, um, including the generalizability. There was a moderate and severe treatment arm of the, of the groups, and our patient meets the moderate criteria based on the fact that she is not in the CCU. She is not requiring any mechanical ventilation or organ support. She is on six liters of oxygen. However, to be considered for the severe group, she would have had to been on 30. And so in this moderate arm, there was 2,219 participants. And what it showed is that there was a lower amount of days that required, um, that required support Organ support days was the primary outcome. And in this moderate arm, therapeutic dosing of anticoagulation, which was um, mostly um, anoxaparin, did benefit patients who were in the moderate severe arm, however, or in the moderate arm. In the severe arm, however, this was not the case. And because of poor clinical outcomes that are seen, I do feel that anticoagulation is necessary and warranted for her, especially because she is going to be admitted. And with that being said, I think that she should have the therapeutic dosing that was shown as, that was shown to be effective um, in this trial. And that would, with her weight of 97.5 and at a one mg per kg dosing regimen, twice daily, that would put her at per dose 100 mg of anoxaparin administered subcutaneously twice daily. There are no um, issues with this regimen that I can see. Uh, the patient does not have allergies that we are aware of, and she does not have any renal um, compromise. Her creatinine clearance per the cockroft -Cro gall was uh, greater than 60 mL per minute. Um, additionally, monitoring for this for Ms. Hamilton would include any kind any signs of bleeding, um, including dark stools, um, decrease in BP, including labs. Uh, we want to be looking whether or not she becomes anemic, also her APTT levels. And I am unaware on whether or not she has received heparin before, and so we would want to monitor uh, for HIT. And we would do that by trending her white blood cell counts um, if they were increasing. Additionally, she is starting to fall into an acidotic state. And I think that uh, monitoring her lactate um, is appropriate. And going back to her uh, treatment for community-acquired pneumonia, uh, she's currently taking azithromycin and amoxicillin. And I think that that should be uh, reassessed on whether or not she does in fact have an infection and if she's not found to have an infection I feel like those um, should be discontinued however in her x-ray she did have the broken glass that was indicative um, indicative of those seen with uh, COVID-19. If you have any questions please feel free to call the pharmacy and I would be able and I would love to be a further assistance. Thank you.